Ian Duncan, Conservative MEP for Scotland. What's your reaction to uh, the speech this morning from Nicola Sturgeon? Well, two things emerged very clearly. That, uh, belatedly, the SNP are now of the view that reform is indeed required. And a lot of the reforms that she was talking about, I think, are things which the Conservative Party would wholly endorse. So I have no qualms in saying that Such out loud. Well, she was talking about the need, again, for reform of the common fisheries policy. And we believe, again, four square that that must be done. We must be prioritising the energy union. I've been campaigning on this issue, so I think there'd be no difficulty in that. The digital agenda, another issue which is a core Conservative policy. So campaigning for reform of these aspects. Some of the other areas, I think, again, need more work. And that's the second part, where I believe there is a democratic deficit within the Commission. There are some problems about the direction of policy which are taken without leave of any democratic mandate. She was remarkably quiet on some of those. And to my mind just now, we've got an, op an opportunity to make a difference, and that difference could well be significant. We've got more leverage because there will be a referendum, and I believe the Prime Minister will be able to bring about some serious reforms. But the important thing to remember, and I would stress this to Nicola as much as I would stress it to anybody else, it's not just about the UK getting a better deal, it's about the EU getting a better deal. It's about making sure that we don't just talk about Britain, but we talk about how other like-minded member states can move forward toward a reformed EU. What about this idea of a double majority? Is that something you'd support? I have difficulties with that for two reasons. The first thing is the matter of the in-out referendum for the EU was widely discussed during the Scottish referendum last year. And despite that, a majority of Scots voted to remain inside the UK. And the second thing is in the UK, all votes should be equal. It's very difficult to say that some votes are more important than other people's votes. And I think that would be a very difficult thing to take forward. My view is, and this is where I think uh, the First Minister and I are on the same ground, we will both be campaigning, I believe, for a reformed EU and to remain within a reformed EU. And to my mind, when you look at the polling, and I know polls are a, bit, a little bit discredited, but when you look at the polling, Scots and the English indeed are remarkably similar in their view about the importance of staying inside a reformed EU. So there may well be a time when we are both campaigning strongly to remain within a reformed EU. And to my mind, that's the most important message we can take from today. Does the yes voice in this referendum need to be a united voice? She says she'll be campaigning on her own as First Minister of Scotland and leader of uh, the SNP. I think that's somewhat of a peculiarity. Last week, the former First Minister, Alex Salmond, said he would share a platform with George Osborne and others to campaign to remain inside a reformed EU. This week, uh, the most recent First Minister said no, she can't do that. So, I mean, exactly who are we talking to now? The former First Minister said it's absolutely fine. The current First Minister has some doubts about it. My view is the important issue is to make sure we have an informed debate so that Scots and the rest of the UK can make up their mind about an important relationship with ourselves and the EU. Has the Conservative Party opened a Pandora's box uh, by making this referendum uh, a reality, really? Um, is there a risk, as she says, of a backlash if the UK uh, votes no that could lead ultimately to Scottish independence or at least another referendum on Scottish independence? Well, you see, my view is, sadly, the First Minister is just looking for an excuse to have another Scottish referendum because the flip side of that is if indeed then Scotland and the rest of the UK vote to remain within the EU, does that therefore remove any credence to having a Scottish referendum? I think another excuse will be found to have that self-same Scottish referendum. To my mind right now, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland and England will be campaigning for a reform, and once that reform is clear, I believe, to remain within the EU. A brief final question. She has warned that uh, the referendum may not solve Britain's relationship with Europe if there's not a positive message of the benefits of the European Union. What do you make of that as, as an argument and a warning to you, the Conservatives? Well, I certainly think that uh, Ms Sturgeon's in a strong position to do that because it's quite evident that the Scottish referendum in no way resolved uh, any matters regarding Scotland's future. That much is perfectly clear. We were told that the Scottish referendum was a once in a generation. There isn't an egg timer small enough now to measure how quickly that generation will pass. My view right now is we will put forward a positive and constructive approach to the EU. That, to my mind, is vital, as are our interests on the continent. But the point is, to simply argue, therefore, because we cannot resolve it, we should have no referendum, is a little bit rich coming from the First Minister, who not only championed the last Scottish referendum, but seems to be angling to secure the next Scottish referendum.